Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and today I am coming to you not with Godzilla news, but still something that's kind of kaiju oriented. I don't know how many of you have heard this, but there is an independently made kaiju movie coming out very very soon called The Great Buddha Arrival. Now there's a bit of history I need to explain at first, because this movie is technically not an original film, but it is something that most people have not seen. Sound contradictory? Well, for the uninitiated, here's what's going on. Back in 1934, the Japanese film industry released a movie called Daibutsu Kaikoku. It was a movie in which a giant statue of the Buddha came to life and started walking across Japan, apparently on some sort of mission for the benefit of the entire world. Seeing as how this movie was released in 1934, a good 20 years before Godzilla made his big debut in 1954, you could make an argument that this was the first real Japanese kaiju movie. Then again, whether or not it does count depends on how you define a kaiju movie. After all, by all the descriptions, Daibutsu Kaikoku was not really a monster movie as we would recognize them. But that could potentially just be boiled down to a matter of semantics. Now if you're wondering where you can see a copy of this movie, I unfortunately have some bad news to deliver. It is a lost film. Yes, this is sadly one of those films that has been lost to history. Most people believe that all copies of it were destroyed during World War II. One of the trailers for the remake appears to have a few really brief snippets of the original film at the beginning, but if those are authentic clips, they are all that remain. Otherwise, all we have to go on are reviews and testimonies of people who saw it at the time. However, there is a remake, sometimes being called a reimagining, being produced by 3Y Films. It's a crowdfunded movie set to be released on December 15th of this year. That is to say, it's being released in Japan on that date. There's no word at this point about an international release, although there are a few Western actors in it, and given that there is more of a market for foreign film imports these days with the advent of DVD, Blu-ray, and digital formats, it may only be a matter of time. So by this point, we've had a couple of trailers for it. I'll provide links so you can see them for yourselves. My own personal thoughts on it are that I am intrigued, but at the same time cautious. On the one hand, when you watch the trailer, you're guaranteed to see some familiar faces. I won't spoil anything here, go watch the trailer and see if you recognize anyone. The only hint I'll give you is that if you're familiar with recent Godzilla and Gamera movies, you're liable to at least recognize one or two people. And of course that visual aspect of having a gigantic statue of a religious figure marching around a modern day city does have a real visual resonance. It's one of those sights that instantly draws you in and gets your mind racing. The Western equivalent would be if the statue of Jesus Christ in Rio de Janeiro started walking around. There are also one or two shots in the trailer that seem to imply this movie might be a sequel to the original. There's a quick shot of one guy looking through photographs of the statue moving around, which seems to imply that maybe this has happened before. I don't know for certain, but if it is, that would be a very intriguing aspect. Plus, in a roundabout way, this is kind of a preservation of film history. Unless by some miracle someone finds a copy in their attic somewhere, there is no salvaging the original film about the Great Buddha arrival, but through this remake, we can at least get an idea of what could have been. So why am I concerned? Well, first of all, it looks a little cheap. More specifically, it looks unevenly cheap. Shots of the Great Buddha in the city have a very cinematic feel, but shots of the people feel more like they were shot on video. This is further echoed by how the audio in one of the trailers has that echoey quality that you expect from, well, videos like I might make. And yes, I realize, crowdfunded movie, it's not gonna have that gigantic Hollywood budget, but there are ways to work around that. Maybe it just hasn't been refined yet, so I'll reserve full judgment there. But on the other hand, something about the way these trailers play out feels kind of... familiar. Stop me if you've heard this one. 
An enormous, mostly immobile being who can be described as a god incarnate appears in modern day Japan and starts walking across the city. Yeah, based on what little we've seen, this movie is looking an awful lot like Shin Godzilla with a statue in place of a sea monster. Part of that is stemming from how the statue really doesn't seem to be moving at all. I mean, yes, it's moving insofar as it is not staying in one place, but beyond that, it's remaining fairly static. Head, fixed. Expression, fixed. Arms and hands, fixed. Torso, fixed. I assume the legs must be moving because it appears to be walking, but we don't actually see the legs, so I can't confirm that. Now you could look at that and say, but it's a statue, what do you expect? I would say Majin from the Daimajin trilogy and Talos from Jason and the Argonauts were also statues and they were able to move around quite a bit. And also there are the descriptions and brief snippets of footage from that lost 1934 original. So it can be argued that just because your monster is a statue doesn't mean it needs to be a statue. Now of course, that's not to say they can't necessarily work with that. If they want to keep the statue as a completely unreadable statue, then there is a way you can make that interesting. It would certainly make more sense for a statue to be unexpressive than a supposedly organic creature. Be that as it may though, I do still kind of wonder if the Great Buddha arrival is just going to be Shin Godzilla 2.0. Putting my own feelings about Shin Godzilla aside, think about this for a moment. The Great Buddha arrival has the potential to be its own thing. But the trailers are putting forth the idea that it doesn't want to be its own thing, it wants to be Shin Godzilla. And if it does prove to just be Shin Godzilla with a different aesthetic choice, what reason would it then have to exist? After all, we've already got Shin Godzilla, why would we necessarily need a carbon copy of it? Bear in mind, that's just a concern I've got. I'm not jumping to conclusions and assuming that is definitely what's going to happen, if anything, I'm putting this out there because I want to make clear I hope that's not what happens. And, as I said, there is a way that this could potentially work in a way that's distinct from Shin Godzilla. It's my hope that that happens. I don't want this production to fail. If I ever get a chance to see it, I will see it, and I will give you my honest opinion if and when that happens. So. I guess yet again, I'm at a place where my intrigue and my concern are balancing each other out. We're a little less than a month away, so we will see what happens when the Great Buddha arrival officially arrives. And as always, you're free to leave your thoughts on this particular development in the comments section below. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.